Hey guys, today we're going to talk about function rules. So, lesson 8 2 function rules. And you guys are actually going to develop these rules, or like equations, for us to solve for any number in a sequence. So, we got a lot of great things to talk about today. So, today's date is March 20th. 19. Sorry about the mess up on the date yesterday. So let's start with that word I just mentioned, and that's the word sequence. Not sequins, like pretty things that make your clothes all shiny, but a sequence is a list of numbers in a specific order. following a pattern. Okay. A list of numbers in a specific order following a pattern. Now, I'm going to use a word for us. I think we've talked about this word before when we were talking about uh, expressions and each part of an expression is called a term. So that's the same thing for each number in the sequence. It's called a term. <coughs> okay. Now, there's two major sequ types of sequences we talk about. One is called arithmetic, arithmetic. So it's based on adding and subtracting. And then we have a geometric sequence, which is based on multiplying or dividing. Okay, so let's talk about the arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence. And, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is just so full of gift right now. Too much information, Rosner. Knock it off. Okay, will do. Add or subtract the same value... every time to determine the next term. Okay. Oop, next term. So just to let you know, it's either an adding pattern or it's a subtracting pattern. If it's both, then it's not really an arithmetic sequence. It's got to be one or the other. So let's give you an example of one. Let's say we had 7, 14, 21, 28. And it's going to continue. And our job is to try to figure out, let's say, what comes next. All right? So a couple things to pay attention to. Are your numbers increasing or are your numbers decreasing? If your numbers are increasing, then the option that it would be is that you're using some sort of um, adding pattern. If your numbers are decreasing, then you would be using some sort of subtraction pattern in an arithmetic sequence. So let's see if we can determine what's going on. So let's see. To get from 7 to 14, I think you would add 7. So I'm going to suppose that is my pattern. So if I add 7 to 14, does it give me 21? Yes, it does. If I add 7 to 21, does it give me 28? Yes, it does does. So what I notice is the pattern is adding 7. Okay. So if I wanted to figure out the next three terms, I would continue the pattern. If I add 7 to 28, well then I get 35. If I add 7 to 35, I get 42. If I add 7 to 42, I'm going to get 49, and so on. Okay? So I can say the next three terms in the sequence. are 35, 42, 
and 49, okay? <clears throat> now, this can also happen with subtraction, so let's do one like that. And we've got 4.5. Yep, we can deal with decimals. 4, 3.5, 3, dot, dot, dot. So, notice this time my numbers are decreasing. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and add that over here. So, these were increasing. So, the pattern is going to be adding. Now, when we talk about geometric sequence, also you would see increasing with multiplication. And decreasing would be with division. Though, some people, instead of dividing by a number, will multiply by its reciprocal, just because it's easier to multiply with fractions than to divide with the number, especially if you have decimals involved. So this one is decreasing, so we would try subtraction. So what do I do to get from 4.5 to 4? Well, it looks like I would subtract oops, 0.5. So I'm going to try that and see if that works. 4 take away half, or 0.5 would give me 3.5. Yep, 3.5 take away 0.5 is going to give me 3. Yep, it all matches. Okay, so what I would say is the pattern, pattern is subtracting 0.5 or 5 tenths. Okay, so if I wanted to figure out the next three numbers, I would just continue the pattern. If I took away 5 tenths from 3, I would end up with 2.5. And if I subtracted 0.5 from 2.5, I would get 2. And if I subtracted 0.5 from 2, I would end up with 1.5. Okay, so I would say the next three terms, oops, I think I forgot a word over here, didn't I? The next three terms, the next three terms in the sequence oh, spelling error, Rosner, are 2.5, 2. .5, two and then 1.5, okay? So this is what an arithmetic sequence looks like. I'm either increasing by adding the same amount every time or I'm decreasing by subtracting the same amount. Now there's all sorts of different patterns, but this is what an arithmetic sequence looks like. So I'm gonna go to my next screen and talk about a geometric sequence. So a geometric sequence Now, you should still be on the same page. This one, you're going to multiply or divide by the same value every time. to determine the next term. So the pattern is going to be multiplying by the same value or dividing by the same value. So let's do an example of this. So we have 2, 4, 8, 16, dot, dot, dot. Now, what I notice is that my numbers are increasing So I should be looking for a multiplication pattern. Okay, now let me show you first, what if I was thinking, hey, they're increasing, it's got to be an adding pattern. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is, wait, not 8, 6, uh-oh. So what we notice is adding doesn't work. So we try the next layer, and we go, okay, what would I multiply 2 by to get to 4? Well, I'd multiply by 2. If I multiply 4 by 2, do I get 8? Yes, I do. If I multiply 8 by 2, do I get 16? Yes, I do. <clears throat> so what I figure out is that the pattern 
is multiplying by 2. Okay, so if I wanted to figure out the next three terms in the sequence, I just can continue to multiply um, the last term by 2. So 16 times 2 is going to give me 32. And if I multiply by 32 by 2, I get 64. And if I multiply 64 by 2, I get 128. Okay, so then I would say the next three terms in the sequence are 32, oh, that's a terrible 32, 32, 64, and 128, okay? So I'm not going to show you a division pattern right now because we're going to kind of focus in on uh, multiplication patterns for a little bit. <clears throat> and the next bit is going to get a little hairy. Now the weird thing is we actually were dealing this with this idea in algebra it gets dealt with in geometry, it gets dealt with in algebra 2, so this is interesting groundwork that you guys are starting. So I'm going to go to my next page, and we're going to apply this idea of arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence to coming up with a rule. So some sort of expression or equation that we can use to figure out any number in a sequence, not just the next three. So going to get black and boring here for a little while here. To determine any number in a sequence, even 105th term, we need to discover a rule to help us. So what we're going to do is our rules are going to be based on an arithmetic sequence, okay? So step one, do, 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 do. work with an arithmetic sequence. So we're going to use that as our guide. So we're going to have a pattern, and we're going to work arithmetic. We're going to work with a pattern that is um, addition. Oh, Mephic, that did look weird. Let's try that again. Arithmetic sequence. So the numbers we're going to choose to work with are the numbers 8, 16, 24, 32. Okay? And I bet you've already figured out, just looking at them, you already, bam, I know what the rule is. So we're going to use a table to help us. That's going to be our second step. So remember we talked about tables yesterday. Tables are a great, great, great way of showing work and helping you organize stuff. So we're going to create what's called a horizontal table of values. That names, oops, sorry, the order. And we're going to use the idea position. So what position is that number in the sequence? Okay, that's going to help us come up with our rule of each term in the sequence. The order or position of oh, each term in the sequence. Now, this is kind of heady stuff, but you got to trust me on this, and you got to practice it, okay? then you'll feel like a genius. So we're going to do our horizontal chart. It's going to be position and value of the term. Now, if you think back to yesterday, we talked about input and output. So we're going to talk about the same thing here. So the position is going to be the input and the value of the term is going to be the output. And you might be saying, Rosner, there's no table here. Here it comes. 
Reep. Reep. Let's see. And now we've got sorry, four terms. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. And you might say, A, you're not very good at spreading things out evenly. Yep, that's true. Tonight I am having trouble. And you said four terms, but you put in an extra box. <laughs> that's how we're going to get our rule, my friends. That's how we're going to get our rule. So our values, the first number was 8. The second number was 16. The third number was 24. And the fourth number was 32. So what's the mystery number here? We're going to call him N for number. Okay? Oh, uh, scratch that. Take that all over. I put them in the wrong spot. They're my output. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. Hope you guys aren't using pen. Now, don't be me. Let's try this again. So, what goes on top? What position are they in? 8 is in the first position, 16 is in the second. 24 is in the third, 32 is in the fourth. And we have any term in the sequence. Okay? So this is going to be a term or a number in the sequence. So it can be anywhere that we want it to be. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do is look at our chart, and we're going to determine our pattern. So that's going to be this big step here, is find the pattern of the sequence. And we're going to call that the value. Okay. So if you notice, to get from 8 to 16, I add 8, 16 to 24, I add 8, 24 to 32, I add 8. So for us, the pattern is add 8, okay? Now, what we're going to do is come up with a way of showing between the position number and the value of the term and the pattern with the position, the pattern, and the value, okay? So we're going to create a little bit of a formula, and this is what the formula is going to look like. We're going to take the position. This is in first, second, third, fourth, or end position. We're going to multiply it by the pattern. Now, we're not going to focus in on the operation. We're going to focus in on just the number. Because it, and we can almost think about it as being a positive number that we're multiplying by, and there's your plus. And that's going to help us figure out the value. So we're going to use the numbers we already know. So if I take the first position and I multiply it by the pattern, which in this case is always going to be 8, I should get the first number in the sequence, and 1 times 8 is 8, and that checks off, okay? So I'm going to take the second number in the sequence, multiply it by the pattern, which again is 8, and if I got the right idea, I should get the answer of the number that's the second term in the sequence. And I get 2 times 8 is 16. Wow, this is looking good so far. <clears throat> I'm taking the third number in the sequence. I'm going to multiply it by the pattern, which was that adding 8. So 8. And it should equal the third term. And 3 times 8 equals 24. Okay, so far I'm feeling really good about this. And then we take the fourth term in the sequence, and we're going to multiply it by the pattern, which is the 8. And again, we focus in on the number. 
and that equals 32. Okay, this is fantastic. So what if I wanted to figure out the 10th term without having to go, well, here's the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. I could do that, but that's going to take a really long time. So here's what we're going to do in our next step. We're going to write the function rule. Oh, let's do different colors. How about that? Write a function rule. for position n. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our what we were doing in the last one, we're going to take the position, which is n, we're going to multiply it by the pattern, which is 8, and we're going to get 8n. That is our rule. This is telling us the nth term's value. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, keeping this in mind, the last thing we're going to try is to figure out... Bum, 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 bum what value would the 15th term have? So what that says is we're going to replace the n in the rule with 15. And when I multiply 8 times 5, I get 40, and I carry the 4. And 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. And I get 120, okay? So <clears throat> you can test it out if you want to and list all those numbers. I personally don't want to. Okay, so we're going to practice this. I know this is a long video, but this is so amazing what you guys get to learn at 6th grade. This is so cool because this is hard for older people. Okay, this is a real struggle for a lot of people. Here we go. Write a rule in words and symbols now when they say symbols what they're really saying is in an expression. So you're going to create an expression just like we created that 8n how we could get what we needed, okay? Um, then find the eighth term, okay? So first problem, we have position and we have value. So hopefully, I'll do it right the first time. And we're going to have one, two, three, four, five here. Now, what's weird is my position is not going to start with one, but it doesn't matter. We can still figure out the rule here. So our positions are two, three, four, five, and n. So what are our numbers? <coughs> 12, 18, 24, 30. Okay, so what we want to do is to figure out the pattern. Very important. What do I do to 12 to make it 18? I add 6. What do I do to 18 to make it 24? I add 6. What do I do to 24, oops, 24 to make it 30? I add 6. So think about it. If I'm in position 2 and I multiply it by the pattern 6, I should get 12. And you know what? I do. So let's mentally go through it. If I take 3 times 6, do I get 18? Yes. If I multiply 4 by 6, do I get 24? Yep. 
If I multiply 5 by 6, do I get 30? Fantastic. <clears throat> so here's what's happening. We're going to multiply the position. So what order the numbers came in? By 6. So that's going to be my rule. So my rule is going to be 6 times whatever position we're in. Okay, so that's the first answer right there. Box them up. Okay, the next one, so we got to figure out what uh, the eighth term is. So remember, all we're doing is substituting in 8 for the n, for what position. So this is the position 8, and we get 48. So that's our second answer. God, doesn't, doesn't that make you feel like a genius? Makes me feel like a genius. I feel smarter every time I do a problem like this. Let's do another one. Position, value. So you got one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> We're going to do positions three, four, five, six, and n. Our numbers. 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, let's look for a pattern. How do I get from 7 to 8? I add 1. How do I get from 8 to 9? I add 1. How do I get from 9 to 10? I add 1. So, if this worked like it did in the last one, I'm going to take the position, which is 3, and I'm going to multiply it by the pattern, which is 1, and that should equal 7. And, oh no, it doesn't. <laughs> so what do we do to fix it? Well, what is 3 times 1 equal? It equals 3. So the question is, what do I need to do to 3 so that it equals 7? Well, from my first grade experience, I would add 4. Okay, so now it looks like I'm going to have to do two things to get to my number. So let's try it out. Let's take our position number. Uh, this time let's do 4. We're going to multiply it by 1. That only takes me to 4. If I add 4, does it equal 8? Yes, it does. This is so exciting. Okay, let's try one more. Okay. Uh, let's take the position 5, and let's multiply it by the pattern, which is 1. That gives me... Five. But if I take that answer and I add 4 to it, do I actually get the value of the fifth number, 9? And the answer is yes! Okay, so here's the... Are you ready for this? This is so strange. You ready? You really? I'm ready. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply whatever position we're in by 1, then add 4. So what does that look like as a rule? We're going to multiply our position by 1, then add 4. Or 1 times n using the identity property of multiplication would be n plus 4. Now I can figure out the eighth term. So what I'm going to do, oh, I forgot to say that over here, eighth term. Bing, bing. We're going to take our position, which is going to be the eight. We're going to add four to it. And the eighth number would be
And we could figure that one out pretty easily. Seventh term, 11. Uh, eighth term, 12. Okay? All right, one more. I know this is super long, and I'm really, really sorry. But it's worth it. So position and value. So, oh, actually, this one's shorter. Oops. Why is it not working, mister? There we go. Okay. So on this one, our positions are going to be 1, 2, 3, N. And our... Sequence numbers are going to be 5, 7, 9. So let's see if we can figure out what the pattern is. And if you can't, you're in trouble. What do I do to 7? If 5 to get to 7, I add 2. What do I do to 7 to get to 9? I add 2. Okay, so let's check out. Because remember how we had the problem last time and it didn't work? So <sighs> fool me once, right? So let's multiply 1 times... 2, and that equals 2. Dang it, but we need to get to 5. So what am I going to do to 2 to get to 5? Ooh, if I add 3, then I'm going to equal 5. All right, so let's try it and make sure that it works. Let's go to position 2. And if I multiply that by the pattern 2, that's going to give me 4, but I need to get to 7. So 4 plus 3 equals 7. Okay. I'm feeling good about this. So here's what I think is happening. We're going to multiply the position by 2, then add 3. Okay? So what does our rule look like? Okay, oh, sorry. I think my tummy just made a noise. So I'm going to take my position, n, and I'm going to multiply it by the pattern 2, and then I'm going to add 3. Ooh, that's cool. So what's the eighth term? We're going to take our eighth term, we're going to multiply it by 2, and then add 3. So I get 16 plus 3 equals 19. Okay? There you go, folks. That's what you get to do. Have fun. This is exciting. See you later.